I'm going to share with you some somewhat obvious yet quite counterintuitive things about self-help, positive affirmations, spirituality, and things of that nature. And I just need to say at the beginning that obviously I think these things can be useful and be beneficial for people in plenty of situations. And what I'm saying is not uh, saying something is completely bad and completely useless. I just have to mention this as a bit of a caveat and a disclaimer, because what I've learned over the years is that if you say anything critical or point out any downfall or any possible um, error in anything, people take it as the, that entire thing is bad or it's somehow like a personal attack on the whole thing. Uh, so I just need to point this out at the beginning, which actually kind of really easily ties in with the whole point of the video. Because um, one thing that I've noticed a lot is that uh, often people that are the most kind of open-minded or very spiritual or in a political sense very kind of tolerant and all about compassion and all these things, these are some of the most black and white thinkers that I've ever come across. Meaning something is absolutely one thing or absolutely the other thing and there's no there's nothing in between and they have the in, have have an inability to perceive things as a bit of actually a bit of a gradient, a bit of a spectrum, meaning certain things could be really true under certain circumstances and false under other ones, useful in certain situations, not useful in other ones. And also just kind of a basic mature understanding that very few things in the world are ultimately good or ultimately true. And that there's typically going to be exceptions and typically anything positive can also even have drawbacks and even have negative consequences associated with it. Anything that I've noticed where the more insignificant a person feels inside, the more externally their life becomes about being significant and maybe even spiritualizing their life or trying to call their mental illness a spiritual experience or a virtue or some weird distorted thing like that. Whereas if you feel internally quite strong and confident and competent, now your life tends to become about how insignificant you are and how small you are in the grand scheme of things and how much of an impact you can have on other people and how your life can be that of service. But again, even within each of those things, there's always exceptions because there's kind of true and false representations of something. Meaning people let's say that are very internally not in a good position, I'll just <laughs> leave it quite vague, is that they can hear this about people that are strong and do what's called modeling or mimicking or just imitating or just straight up lying to themselves and everyone else and try to have this life about, you know, service and being about other people and this whole other thing. But it's coming from kind of the wrong place. Uh, because it's, again, just about them trying to boost themselves up and feel more significant. And then uh, there's also, you know, people that are kind of just people pleasers. Um, you know, there's a whole aspect of our fight or flight response, which is the fawning phase, which is kind of just people pleasing and serving others and externally trying to just make everyone else okay. Obviously, that's not really what... Um, <laughs> what we would call a confident, strong, competent place. Um, so it's just a really funny thing that I noticed, especially, you know, looking through social media and realizing when I'm seeing people like their whole life is about improving themselves and their spiritual journey and their spiritual quest and finding their highest purpose and their highest passion and spiritualizing all of their experiences and somehow overlaying their fight or flight response and saying it's a spiritual thing or their sexuality is somehow spiritual like they're literally taking the lowest like reptilian responses in their nervous system and trying to equate them with the highest most transcendental aspirations and experiences that a human being can possibly have which obviously is crazy and makes no sense um, I don't mean crazy in the sense of just logically doesn't add up whatsoever and is a complete contradiction. I don't mean crazy as in like a put down. See back to my uh, introduction and disclaimer when I started the video. So it's just a really funny thing. And what I've realized is that if someone is externally coming on with this big spiritual identity about all this, their self-improvement and their self-help and all their attainments and their virtues and how evolved they are, 
I typically assume that the opposite is true. <laughs> uh, because of the fact that they have to lead with that. Likewise, if someone comes on politically super tolerant, super progressive, super all of these things, I also tend to think the opposite. They probably view things in a very black and white way, and they're probably doing the exact things that they're against, which is they're against judging an individual based on whatever group they belong to, but then that's exactly what they do. They prejudge individuals based on their gender, their race, uh, and those other factors, which is the same thing they're saying they're against. Likewise, if I meet someone in like that's really into the manosphere or like the red pill thing, typically I wouldn't call that an empowered person. I would say that's probably an, an, a person that has a lot of anger towards women is probably hurt by women repeatedly. And now their whole identity is about the opposite reaction to that. So it's just a funny thing that, that people do. And it's just a really kind of counterintuitive thing where the more genuinely strong and capable and competent you feel inside of yourself, the less yourself is actually really even an issue and the rest you really less you really even concern yourself with it versus the flip side of someone's that's their whole life, their whole obsession, which is honestly kind of trendy now. It's kind of normalizing the cool thing of like doing therapy. I'm doing all these psychedelic things. My whole life is just all about me and feeling good and finding my passion and doing whatever, which is like, okay, there's again, could be a lot of usefulness in that that might be what that person needs to do to kind of get back to something stable but it's like you wouldn't live your whole life in a cast like if you broke your arm if you lived your whole life in that cast you're not really living and you're not really healed you're just handicapped more or less and in my opinion i think that's really what a lot of spirituality and healing and self-help really comes down to is not not getting people to a place of being able to run comfortably but teach them how to walk with crutches for the rest of their life and giving them lots of different options of crutches and lots of different ways of coding it with like, you know, purple hearts and unicorns and rainbows and gold glitter or matte black, like whatever, you know, the aesthetic or the bias is that we're trying to go for. Um, it's a fairly, at least in my opinion, from what I've been observing over the last 15, 20 years is extremely predictable it's an extremely predictable set of circumstances and behaviors and outcomes and cycles that people will go through. Um, again, it's not a knock on anyone. It's just human nature. It's just what we do, um, for better or worse. <laughs> so, and again, I just wanted to point this out. It's kind of a counterintuitive thing that um, I've definitely noticed uh, over the years. And personally, I've been on many different parts of the spectrum, so I can speak about it from an intimate personal knowledge and from just observing it for, you know, so many years, um, just being a human. So hopefully that helps and, uh, we'll talk to you soon.